is currently a member of the focal point appointed by federal government of Nigeria on trade and investment matters. And in October 2018, just last year, the federal government of Nigeria appointed him as a member and facilitator of the technical work group on the Nigerian impact and readiness assessment of the African continental free trade area. Professor Jonathan Aremu holds membership of reputable academic and professional societies. Member, the Nigerian Economic Summit Group, NESG, and currently, Professor Aremu is the facilitator of trade, investment, and competitiveness of the group. May I therefore crave your indulgence to rise and receive the inaugural lecture of today in person of Professor Jonathan A. Aremu. Let's, let's continue to applaud him. Let's continue to applaud him. The title is as stated, and a lot of people have said it, sequencing and negotiating Nigerian regional and international trade agreement. Let me start by saying why most economists believe liberalization of international trade is globally beneficial to all. The real truth is that it brings both gains and pains. And that is an anonymous quotation. Yes, pains, if they are not well sequenced and if they are not well negotiated. The outline of my presentation is as follows. I'm looking at introduction, the historical content of global trading arrangement, the period trade negotiation Nigeria is facing today, how to resolve the main problem confronting developing countries, particularly Nigeria, and how do we formulate Nigerian trade policy, and then we now look at the way of sequencing and negotiating it with some basic, very important conclusions and recommendations. As I said earlier, most economists believe that trade liberalization is a good thing. However, two questions demanding answers which the lecture wishes to address are why should the process of trade liberalization evolve sequentially? That is to say, some form of integration taking place before others. That is, why do countries not simply adopt every necessary opening of their reforms in trade? The next question is what factor should determine which of the trade issues that must be addressed first and which one have to be addressed later. Clearly speaking, the current globalization is most noticeable in trade. At the touch of a button, you can trade with any part of the world. And at the same time, the multilateral trade is coexisting with regional trade arrangement. The question is this, will regional trade arrangement not undermine what all of our all of us have agreed under the multilateral level of the World Trade Organization. A country's economic development, just as said by our PC, will be seriously affected the way such a country performs under the multilateral as well as regional negotiation of trade. For Nigeria, effective negotiation will be affected by more main things four main factors, particularly as at now. The first one is identification of trade and development objectives within our National Economic Reform Growth Plan, which is the current National Development Plan. Secondly, formulation of an effective trade policy towards such objective that is found in the NERGP. Number four, putting in place the sequence of trade liberalization that is best suited for the country per time. And lastly, but not the least, establishment of an appropriate negotiation strategy at regional as well as multilateral level. One more question is this. Have Nigerians done this? Well, from my position, as you know, but I don't think 
we have done that at all. We have not sequenced, we have not negotiated well. The sad part of it is that Nigeria have no trade policy. The last one that was done, I was privileged to be one of those people that drafted in 2011 and 2012. It was not signed to law. The only trade policy that is guiding the way we trade among nations in Nigeria today is the one that was done in 2001 and started the execution in 2002. Definitely, that is an absolute trade policy. Well, to be able to look at this issue very well, let us see some historical content in global trading arrangement. We start with uh, mercantilism. Mercantilism believes that you should strive to trade. You should strive to export. Why? You should minimize imports. And in the 16th up to 18th century, that was the opinion of everyone in the world. Everybody tried to sell export, but they don't want to import. The question is this. Everybody wanted to sell but they don't want to import so that they can conserve gold, they can conserve money. Then, if nobody wants to buy, then what you are producing, how will it go out? So, they concentrate so much on what is called favorable balance of trade, as opposed to development, as opposed to using trade to actually get what trade is expected to bring. Well, by, 19, by the 18th century, the theories of Adam Smith and Ricardo led to a new rethinking. And after the one, the Victorian allies, particularly after the World War II, they forged a conscious opinion in liberalizing global trade. And that one led to the conclusion of the General Agreement of Tariff and Trade in 1947. Just recall, that that was not the only institution. In fact, that was not an institution. The main institution from the Brenton Wood Conference is that of International Monetary Fund to take care of balance of payment affecting nations. And then the second institution that set was the World Bank, which was to actually see to the reconstruction after the World War I and World War II. But the third institution that was to be set up was International Trade Organization. It was never set up. But a chapter in it is the chapter on general agreement on trade and tariff. And that one came on board in 1947. And since that time in 1947, until 1995, January 1st, there were a lot of trade rounds that this country were meeting at different locations to be able to determine how do we lower tariffs. The first one was 1947. It took about seven months. It was done in Geneva. Second one was Anesi, it was about five months, 1949. The third one, Tokwe, it was done in 1950. With a lot of tariff cuts. For Geneva, which was 1956, as much as 2.5 billion tariff cuts was actually achieved. You can find this one inside the pamphlet that you are having. Then the Dillion round, the Kennedy round, the Tokyo round, the last of this round was the Uruguay round. We started in '66 and concluded in Marrakesh in April 14th, 1994. And countries started putting their own acceptance to the new world created that was made from the Uruguay round negotiation. On the 4th of January 1995, the World Trade Organization was established. It was established to be able to see to the development of so many things, among which are to provide a way of mitigating all desirable trade and investment action coming from other countries, permit nations to operate, operate predictable, secure, and transparent trade and commercial policy. Membership of WTO, by being a member, you are signaled to the entire world that you are one of those countries that are operating the best practices. There are other advantages which you will see in your pamphlet, including, very important one, the dispute settlement body, 
which is an institution to ensure that when countries are in trouble with respect to their trade relations, there can be a body that can look into it. In our overall region, we are all members of uh, WTO as well, though countries join at different times. You can see that table too. And then you will see the quite a lot of the WTO conference. But in table three, you will see the time each member state of ECOWAS joined. Nigeria joined WTO on the 1st of January 1995. The last country to join was Liberia, and uh, it was on the 16th of December 2005. Now, immediately that was created in 1947, just four, five years after, there's a new rethinking of having a regional arrangement, and that one led to the emergence of multilateral regionalism. That is to say, yes, we agree among the entire global space that we are going to have a WTO arrangement that takes care of everybody, but that should not stop those countries that wanted to operate a preferential arrangement among themselves. So we now have substantial number of countries going into regional trade negotiation among themselves. And these negotiations they have increased in width as well as in depth. In width by the number of countries that are joining, in depth by the number of protocols which they permitted among themselves. And when you look at the faces, the faces can actually start from free trade area to custom union, custom union to common market, and common market to economic union. The loosest, the simplest of it is a free trade area in which countries that are coming together, they don't charge themselves any import duty. A higher level is to have a common CET under custom union, in which not only shall we not be charging ourselves custom duties, but anybody exporting to our region, we are going to charge such an individual the same import duty. This is to actually prevent trade deflection. On and on, quite a lot of this emergence came within the multilateral setting where we have regional arrangements as, as well. But there are quite a lot of questions. If we all agree to have a multilateral trade environment, why having a regional trade agreement also? For one thing, what is the position of the South-South arrangement, developing countries having an economic integration among themselves? What about a situation where we have a developed country and a, South, a developing country having an economic integration among themselves. People have actually questioned that when you have an economic integration between a developed country and a developing country, it can lead to David and Goliath kind of relationship, which means it is only through God intervention that a developing country can win. And that is the main argument why economic partnership agreement is not being signed by Nigeria today. We shall be facing that again. So, in Article 24 of WTO, you can see the various uh, economic integration agreements as provided for by WTO. Article uh, 24.8 and B, Article 24.8A. It also gives opportunity for interim arrangement. That is to say, if you are in economic integration, you may not start everything at, at the same time. You can sequence your arrangement. But having agreed on these things, we still have another institution. They don't call themselves institution, but transnational corporation that does not take note of the comparative advantage in individual countries before they trade. A parent company of transnational corporation that is in UK can have a laminate in Nigeria can have in Canada, can have in Australia, and when they are trading among themselves, they engage in what we call trade mispricing. They don't charge themselves the real price so as to ensure that the transnational corporation system benefits. That's what we call the over-invoicing of imports and under-invoicing of exports. If you have the ablate in Nigeria, and then the ablate is buying from uh, Australia, the billion company of transnational corporation 
contact the athlete in Australia, send it to Nigeria, top that price, instead of $20, make it $50. So by the time it is coming to, let's say, Lever Brother in Nigeria, Nigeria will be paying $50. And the excess amount will be transferred to the headquarters of the transnational corporations. Also, if the athlete in Nigeria is selling product to Ghana, the headquarters can tell the Nigerian athlete, if that thing is $10, sell it to Ghana at $5. So that by the time they are paying Nigerian economy, they will only pay $5 to Nigeria. So whether exporting or importing, transnational corporations use what we call uh, trade mispricing, over importing of import and over importing of export to be able to cheat their host economy. You can see the picture of how they operate there. Now, faced with this multilateral system, Faced with this increasing regionalization of the multilateral system, faced with the activities of transnational corporations, the picture of what you are seeing here, what are the various trade negotiations facing Nigeria? Essentially, we are going to mention four here. Nigeria is faced without a trade policy to guide us. We are yet faced with ECOWAS common trade policy. Also, is African economic community treaty with other African Union members. Also, we are faced with EPA Economic Partnership Agreement with European Union. And lastly, we are equally faced with multilateral negotiation at the WTO. On the ECOWAS front, ECOWAS created in 1975, treaty revised in 1993, but up to now, there is no common trade policy in ECOWAS. What we have is various protocols on free movement, on custom union, on other phases of economic integration. So you can say that our common trade policy in ECOWAS is a summation of every protocol which ECOWAS have up to today. So ECOWAS decided to have a common trade policy about two years ago, because of what some of us are telling ECOWAS is not good. And even on 24th and 26th, I'm going to actually, I've been invited to speak on what has to be done to the common trade policy. Unfortunately, last year, when the member state of ECOWAS wanted to sign the common trade policy, Nigeria come up and say that it cannot sign because of inadequate consultation. And which means, as a sort of Nigerian that dominates ECOWAS by about 70%, ECOWAS have no trade policy. The second negotiation is with the European Union. With the coming of the WTO, the preferences which we were enjoying with the European Union country being their colony can no longer work because it will violate what we call the most Open nation clause. And therefore, WTO told the European Union, all your colonies, go and have an economic partnership agreement. And therefore, under the Cotonou Partnership Agreement, there was an economic partnership agreement that had about five thematic groups. I'm one of the privileged persons to serve in the uh, thematic group on investments since 2004. But what happened? The negotiation was to be completed in 2014. Again, Nigeria declining signing the EPA, while other ECOWAS actually completed and signed on the premise that she require additional consultation. So, on both EU, EPA, as well as ECOWAS common trade policy, Nigerian refused to sign. There are other reasons which Nigerian give why or not signing, because it's afraid of the losses with respect to fiscal revenue, and secondly, the IPA development program, which EU promised. They don't know how they want to execute it. And more importantly, because within ECOWAS, we have the least developed country, which will continue to enjoy what we call the Lomi 4 agreement, then that means their own product coming will be cheaper, and then there can be a sort of trade deflection from all these 13 countries within ECOWAS. It is only the 12 countries within ECOWAS is only three that are developing. And those countries that are developing 
uh, the, will not enjoy the Lumi 4 agreement again. The third negotiation which Nigeria is facing is that of African Economic Community Treaty. 1980 to 1982, the Lagos Plan of Action was completed in which Organization of African Unity said we are going to have and threaten the economic integration of the entire continent. The Lagos Plan of Action was done in Lagos. The African Economic Community Treaty was finalized in Abuja. And then you can look at the program of the integration. I think by 2017, Africa will have a free trade area. 2019, where we are now, we are going to be in custom, African Custom Union. 2023, African Common Market. 2028, we shall have Economic Union, which is the final fashion of an economic integration. When the negotiation started, Nigeria participated from the beginning to the end. And on 21st of March last year, it was concluded with four main protocols. Protocols on trade, protocols on services, and protocols on dispute settlement. I functioned as a member of rule of origin under trade in the negotiation. Paradoxically, Nigeria, that was instrumental to guarding support for the same African Economic Community Treaty, on the day of the signing, 21st of March last year, said he need to consult with domestic stakeholders. So Nigeria was not part of it. ECOWA CTP, Nigeria need consultation. EPA, Nigeria need more consultation. At African Union, despite the naming of the process with Lagos Plan of Action and Abuja Treaty, Nigeria said they will not go into it because they need more consultation. On ending consultation, we don't know. Unfortunately, unfortunately, April 1st, 2019, the 22nd country, which is Gambia, ratified the Treaty of African Continental Free Trade Area. And once 22 countries ratified it, any other country that is coming into it, we have to go by accession. Accession means you will now go to individual African country to go and negotiate your position to be a member of African Continental Free Trade Area. That is the position Nigeria finds itself as at today. If the African Continental Free Trade Area come on border from tomorrow and we want to join it, then we are going to negotiate possibly with Bene first, we go to the next country, and then until we get to Djibouti. I said, and please put that next slide. I said that I know that if Sanyo Okosu is alive today, he may like to sing the song for us concerning our trade matter. And which song? Which way in Nigeria? Why? At home, we don't have national trade policy. Within ECOWAS, we are not part of the common trade policy. In EPA, we say no. And under African Continental Free Trade Area, we constantly say no. Both ECOWAS and AU, they are leaving our country behind. So let's look at the World Trade Organization. Just like any other developing countries, the world trade has not been doing well to the developing countries. Why? Because the world trade grew out of GATT, and we were not part of the negotiation of GATT. As a member of Nigerian Society of International Law, we asked the Minister of Trade in Nigeria in 1995 why Nigeria should be a member of WTO why we were not part in the negotiation. And the answer we can give is that Nigeria, under Abacha 10, then wanted to actually join the entire global body so that it can appeal to the entire world. The government of Abacha did not want to continue inconveniencing the entire world anymore. We did not participate in the negotiation of the Euro round, but we were the first signatory on the 1st of January 1995. Inside WTO, the essence is that countries will be the same. But look at the quotation of Ipin, the current DG of WTO, whom I met even two years ago under the ministerial conference in Argentina. He said, WTO is an organization in which all decisions are taken by consensus, where every member government holds the equivalent of UN Security Council veto, but there is also no denying the fact that some members are more equal than others. 
when it comes to influence. And that is the situation. Other people say that why GATT was able to get substantial trade uh, um, tariff remover. The 25 years of WTO, we have not been able to move forward. Therefore, it is doubtful whether the multilateral system under the WTO will be of any benefit to uh, Nigeria. So that is why the general agreement on trade and tariff inside the WTO is no longer the general agreement on trade and tariff in 1970, uh, 1947. But people called the current general agreement on trade and tariff a general arrangement in talk talk. People are just talking under the ministerial conferences with no articles. General agreement on trade on the talk talk, talking every two, two years. How do we resolve this problem that is facing developing countries, particularly Nigeria? The first thing we WTO set up was the generalized system of preferences, that is to say, individual developed countries can actually lower preference that a product can enter their economy. That's number one, and that is what the relationship you find under the EPA, in which European Union wanted us, our product to enter their country at a special preference. We call it the Agua. We have other economic integration as well. The second one is the dual development agenda. What is the dual development agenda? Many development countries say, when you are negotiating under the GATT, we were not there. When you finalize to establish WTO, we were not there. Therefore, we only sign. The only thing you can do for us, have a development agenda for us. Our development agenda was actually occasioned and was, became compulsory because of what happened on, December, on September 11, 2001, in which the two main buildings in the World Trade Center came down because the developing countries thought there was a serious injustice in the global economy. And therefore, there are a lot of promises, because as I tell you today, people have said that since 2005, the Doha Development Agenda is not there, but is in an under intensive care needing medical attention under the WTO system. Number three is the South-South Corporation. OCTA that actually said that what about if developing countries can come among themselves? Well, that is OK. But again, what will they learn from themselves when the majority of them are poor? What will they learn when quite a lot of them are still open to their metropolis, their former colonial master, to be able to design? even their currency, particularly even with us in West Africa here. The fourth one we WTO put up is the WTO Trade Facilitation Agreement. What does this one say? This one is saying that because developing countries, they don't have the soft and hard infrastructure. Therefore, let us see what we can do to assist them. So what they now did is that they now say, okay, categorize all these trading items into category A, category B, and category C. Under category A will be those things which you already have in your country that can allow you to sign the trade facilitation agreement. Category C will be where you need some little time, two years, three years, so that you can actually go ahead. Then category C is one in which you need capacity building to be assisted by developing countries. About uh, two months ago, we have a meeting of Global Alliance in which we look at the category of Nigeria. And a lot of the items, when they say that we are qualified to actually sign the uh, uh, WTO trade facilitation agreement, we never satisfy the condition. So the last one of the initiative is the issue of aid for trade. Aid for trade is that developing countries discover it's going to be difficult for them to trade with developed, uh, developed countries. And therefore, there is need for aid. Particularly, the ministerial conference for in Hong Kong came up that essentially there will be more four kinds of aid, technical trade-related assistance, trade-related infrastructure, production capacity to be able to upgrade the supply of their product, and trade adjustment assistance. So these are the various programs which were put in place by WTO 
to be able to assist Nigeria as well as other developing countries. This is the situation where we are. And there's a need to formulate a new trade policy for Nigeria. We have none now. And it's very insulting. The leading country in Africa has no trade policy. A new trade policy is overdue. Without which we can't actually go into a very good negotiation, talk less of sequencing. Because there is no direction of where we wanted to go to. And that is the real problem. So, what strategy will Nigeria need? Given the importance of uh, trade policy in Nigerian economic reconstruction and growth plan, the major question is what objective need to be set? What regional arrangement do we need? What about the regional dimension? Are the current regional arrangements okay for us? Quite a lot of other um, numerous questions. But to me, I've actually said, well, a good strategy in trade policy formulation would be to determine, we need to look at four items. Only domestic issues, we can have total control. Largely domestic, not totally domestic. There are issues which, as a result of our negotiating with other people, our agreement with other people, we cannot do what we want. We have to listen to that, particularly the WTO. Externally negotiated, like ECOWAS, EU, and uh, African Union, as well as WTO. The last one is externally non-negotiated, where we don't have any reason to be part of the negotiation, but we have to comply. So clearly, we need to design a new trade policy, and those policies must ensure that the following are put into place. Putting in place an exempt trade policy organogram is in figure three. You will see that figure in the paper with you. After that one, the trade that we, we have to design a trade policy that is in support of National Economic Reconstruction and Growth Plan, and that is equally available in Figure 4. Also, there is need to establish trade policy dialogue and consultation process, which we have not been doing enough. And that is one of the big reasons why Manufacturing Association of Nigeria, as well as uh, Labor Union said, Buhari should not actually go into signing of uh, the African Continental Free Trade Area. And lastly, we need to develop trade negotiation strategy by building up the capacity of Nigerian Office of Trade Negotiation. That office was set up, but as I'm talking to you today, there is no law that allows it to operate. I was listening to one of the National Assembly members talking, and he said that we don't need anyone to do negotiation for us again. Well, it's only in the Bible where you forget those who don't know what they are doing. I don't think that is correct. We need Office of Trade Negotiation, just like America, just like any other country. But, and that is the problem we are facing among so many. So, sequencing and negotiating Nigerian trade agreement, arrangement. From this lecture, how do we sequence? The first point of call, there must be national trade policy. That is in line with the current development plan. Economic Reconstruction and Growth Plan. After a national trade policy, the next one in the sequence should be ECOWAS Common Trade Policy. With Nigerian trade policy, we can negotiate ECOWAS trade policy. Because we know what we needed at home, therefore within ECOWAS, there's no problem in locating what we need within our region. After Ecuador trade policy, the next sequence is African continental free trade area. If you sign the EPA before African continental free trade area, the ambition of European Union, which they have done, is cutting Africa into four regions, ECOWAS, SADEC, COMESA, and East African community, and negotiate with them differently. That is why African Union came together let us have our own African economic community so that this EPA will not actually slash us into prisons. So, 
With FY trade policy, the next one is conclusion of African continental free trade area. With that one, we can go ahead to have an economic integration with European Union under the EPA. And after this one, as the entire African, we cannot negotiate under the WTO. This sequence of engagement permits a progressive harmonization of the various trade agreements of the country with both regional and multilateral levels. Ladies and gentlemen, we equally need capacity improvement as well as formation of coalition. Even if you set up national Nigeria Office of Trade Negotiation today, you have to build the capacity of the institution. You have to probably have to build the capacity of the negotiator, the people working there. That office was set up in 2017, and I was privileged to be among those people who the United, United Nations Economic Commission for Africa employed to be able to train them. Apart from that three days training, no other training has been given to them. But again, there is no law backing it up, so it may be scrapped any time from now. Coalition building. We can't do it alone. We must actually make sure we work with other African countries, other ECOWAS countries. What are the conclusions from this, my lecture? Trade governance has been subjected to multilateralism and regionalism over the years. Unfortunately, signature to all this is that it, the agreement behave as if all of us are the same. It is not so. In Nigeria, without appropriate trade policy, without technical expertise, we cause a very good sequence of negotiation. We shall not be able to know what to do and what not to do. With increasing regional agreement in the multilateral trading environment, facing Nigeria, the country must do these 10 points as a matter of urgency. Number one, establish appropriate trade policy development strategy that agree with economic reconstruction and growth plan. Use the strategy to formulate a several trade policy by engaging executive trade policy formulation as presented in the organogram three. Review the existing and large national focal points of which I'm a member of in the country so that we can have a better policy dialogue and consultation process so that people will not complain they, do, they are not aware. Put in place effective and efficient trade negotiation strategy and sequence them within the multiplicity of the trading agreement. Finalize the establishment of the National Nigerian Office of Trade Negotiation and put in place technical competent negotiators in the office as well as develop their capacity to negotiate. Number six, synchronize the sequence of negotiations that agree with our economy, growth, and development plan. Number seven, carry out extensive exercises so that nobody will say I'm not aware, and then the issue of further consultation will not arise. Engage in appropriate coalition with other countries in future trade negotiation. Number nine, review the country position within the existing economic integration, such as ECOWAS, EPA, AGOA, Africa Continental Free Trade Area. And lastly, but not the least, without further delay, sign African Continental Free Trade Area Treaty and use the readiness study, of which I am part and parcel, I don't know whether you see there, with the President consulted, to ratify Nigerian position, if it is still possible. I say if it is still possible because we have got the minimum number of countries to ratify it. So if we are tomorrow, that particular treaty is deposited with WTO, then under Article 24, we can only become member when we are ready for what we can call accession. And accession means we have to go around all the 55 member nations of African Union to be able to defend our reason why we should be a member of that, uh, of that arrangement. So, Mr. Chancellor, sir, the academic community. I've been able to say something, but what is very important is that in business as in life, you cannot get what you deserve. You can only get what you negotiate. This is not my own quotation. It's by Chester Karras. Nigeria must therefore be ready to sequence 
and negotiate our position on trade issues. The time is running out. Instead of unending consultation excuses, so, as, so that we shall be able to get what we desire within the global setting as well as within the regional trade agreement. Thank you for the opportunity.